I was asked to host this show because of my background. I am an American patriot. It was instilled in me as a young boy. I joined the Navy and went right in the SEAL teams. I love being around hardcore Americans. A couple years ago, I went to climb Mount Everest, and I was up on the ice fields there where the ladders are. It's one of the most dangerous places on Everest. And we pushed ourselves to the point of hallucinating, bleeding, or passing out. I came close to dying. I didn't die, and my life is so enriched from that experience. And that's what I love to try to instill in other people. Two minutes of as many perfect push-ups as you can do. Down, up, two, three. Down, up, three. three. Down, up, four. 30 seconds, go. 58. Oh. Here, give me four more. 59. <laughs> Make sure you're off the ground. If you're on the ground, you're going to a zero. Once you lay down on the ground, you're done. Because if we see it's partial push-ups on the way up, you won't know you both got zeros till after we show you the score. It's not this. It's all the way down, all the way up, and that's one. 30 seconds, finish down. The human body is a pretty amazing thing, especially when it's connected to a strong mind. The reason we make training so difficult in the SEAL teams and in Surviving Man is because you have to do much, much more through physical fitness and what some perceive as torture. When you take a break, you could be in the leading rest, and that could be like this, it could be like this, as long as you're not on the ground. We really want to see how people react being uncomfortable. We have a saying in the SEAL teams, the more sweat and tears you put into training, the less bloodshed in wartime. You embrace the suck, as they say in the Army. So we're gonna push these guys hard in training to prepare them for almost any contingency they will see during the mission. The other point of this is mind games. Because you're all gonna be facing one another. The first one who drops, like the XO said, gets zero points. Now get disqualified, because Randy's hair trigger on that shit. <laughs> I wouldn't want Randy upset with me, that's for sure. <laughs> it's a long time to flank, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Especially in the gravel. You start to see when you start reaching that breaking point, you get that sewing machine leg, and <laughs> there's no way to control it. It's pretty tough, and it takes a lot of that support to you. Really going on 12 minutes? Yeah, I think so. Randy's a world-class athlete. He's been putting himself and others through this type of training for years. It's right here between the ears for most of this. I'm sure the body's going to start to hurt. You see the legs start to quiver and the body can pour, start to quiver because it's definitely working your core. But the mind can overcome that pain. It takes some fortitude for sure. Definitely tough to do the plank in a, in a gravel field. So uh, adds a little extra layer of uh, psychological warfare to the situation. Plank is tough enough without having to deal with uh, the grind, so to speak. We chose 32 people out of over 500 who volunteered to be on this show. These are hardcore American patriots. These people are all about defending our country, all about working out hard. They all have resumes and backgrounds that are very, very impressive. I'm competing in Surviving Man because it's a challenge, and I want to show my kids and my friends that are moms like me that you can take on challenges and exceed expectations. On the physical challenges, I think a lot more of it is mental than physical. If you put your mind to it, the pain kind of goes away and you just got to get past that breakover point and, and get there. I want to prove that I have what it takes to be amongst the top competitors in the world. I'm going to be mentally strong, mentally unbreakable. You have to stay focused and I think that's one of the hardest things, especially as you're getting tired and fatigued every single task matters, I'm gonna kick ass. You have to give it your all. I don't really care how big or strong people are, but if we push them so hard and they don't give up because of the mindset, and that's why I say blood from any orifice, push yourself till you bleed, till you pass out, that's the type of person we're looking for.
this remote Nevada desert location, 32 Americans are beginning the adventure of a lifetime. They have chosen to be part of a punishing and dangerous series of challenges that will test their strength, skill, and mental resolve. They will have just five days to prove themselves. Every new day will bring fresh challenges. Each challenge, or evolutions as they are known in the military, will be graded for performance. There will be tough physical evolutions. All the way down, all the way up. All the way down, all the way down. Shooting evolutions. Contact! And tactical evolutions. Not all contestants will make it to the end. But no matter who wins or loses, each one will be changed forever by this experience. When the five days are up, one top scoring contestant will be proudly named a winner, joining the ranks of our host, retired Navy SEAL Don Mann, and co-host, mixed martial arts master Randy Couture. The winner will also receive a cash prize of $10,000. Five days. Thirty-two people, one winner. Who will you pick to win? Who do you think has it in them to make it to the end, to prove they're the greatest survivor in this ultimate contest, Surviving Man? So that's our team, huh? This is what we've come down to. This is our 36. So out of this, we get 32, right? Good. So we've got our 32 and then our reserve. My name is Tolly Safail, executive producer. My name is Stephen Eckleberry. I'm the director of Surviving Man. Tolly. Yeah. Now that I'm in on this project, mm -hmm. it'd be great if you could just break down mm -hmm. some of these people here. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So let's talk about the first person. This is Cody Wilson, right? Now here's the description we wrote. Quick on the draw and passionate about fitness, Cody started shooting at age 15 and has become a big gun enthusiast. He promotes strength, stamina, and health in others as a CrossFit instructor. I'm Cody Wilson, I'm from Virgin, Utah. I'm excited, it seems like we've got a good field of competitors. What? A lot more people are, seem to be a lot more gun savvy and, and ex-military than I thought there would be, so it looks like it's going to be a good competition. I think I have pretty good chances. I do quite a bit of shooting outside of uh, just static range. I do a lot of competition stuff. I also like to exercise a lot. Five, six, seven. I think I have a pretty good shot if I can get the land nav and stuff down. I think he's a contender. Yeah, I mean, definitely. He's physically fit. He looks bright. That doesn't mean that he won't cave. Characteristics for me are probably different than our directors because A, I'm a woman. B, I'm a mom. So I bring that mom aspect to it. I'm very concerned about everybody's well-being. Are they gonna have the physical endurance capacity to survive man? Probably the number one criteria, even ahead of skill, and intestinal fortitude. So this is Keith Raker. He's okay. a real estate father. He has no military or police background, so he's a civilian. My strengths are definitely gonna be on the shooting side, handguns in particular. Uh, I do a fair amount with shotgun as well. If we get into a hugely physical challenge, say running in particular, that's not gonna be my strong suit at all. Jen. She is a personal favorite of mine because she's about my age, mm -hmm. she's an attorney, a doctor, but see, here's the thing. Yeah. She was an Army JAG officer and a police officer. Yeah, and, and she's an ER technician. That means she's used to dealing with stress. The reason why I'm doing this truly is just the pure fun, adventure, and challenge of it. I don't feel like at this point in my life I need to prove anything, but I have to say I want to win. I don't ever do anything to, to not win. Then the other element that I think is super important is the mental part. I 
Mine are all over the place. Five out of, nope. Your best AR is still going to be about a three minute gun. Okay. Right? This is about your average group that you're going to get with an AR. Okay. They're not made for accuracy, they are made for combat. So I do a lot of uh, meditation, uh, breath work exercises. I'm able to drop my heart rate very quickly. So I can go from like a heart rate of 160 down to 80 in about a minute. It also calms your nerves down when you start to get nervous about something. Like if you're on the high ropes and you have that twinge of, of being scared. Never been afraid of heights until a really bad airborne training accident <laughs> where I had a spine injury, lost all sorts of muscle in one of my legs. Uh, probably took about seven years of rehab to come back from that. We're looking for people who don't quit. You have to be willing to push yourself beyond your limit. Here we have another civilian, you know, a firearms enthusiast. She's mm -hmm. a marksman and she wants to show what a dedicated civilian can do. So what does this competition mean for me? Um, it means still feeling like I can take on challenges, trying out new guns, meeting a whole bunch of really neat people, and learning from them. The mom. Yeah, she's a mom. Go mom. So I have a daughter who has cerebral palsy, and she's in a wheelchair, but that doesn't mean that we can't not do things together. It's crossing the line. Not only is he jogging, but he's pushing a stroller. So uh, one goal that we have is that we run 5Ks together. Um, I push her, she doesn't run, she's in her wheelchair, but she's my running buddy. So Mary, you're my inspiration. I love to compete and I love your attitude and I keep you in my heart while we're doing this competition. We would like for the audience to learn how to defend themselves and also learn more about what our military has to go through because there have been a lot of tactics and methodologies that have been declassified in the last decade or so that have never been seen before. So we were very excited and we thought, well, if we're this excited about it, we think the audience will be too. So this is Daniel, he's a Marine and he plays football, basketball, he runs cross country, track. He did two tours in Iraq. Daniel Robinson from uh, Belleville, Kansas. It looks like a lot of strong competitors, so it's gonna be interesting to see how we all pair up to each other and just gonna try to do the best I can do every single day, every competition. I'm well-rounded and I'm a quick learner, just giving it your all and a lot of uh, heart and dedication, you know. And the better you do, the better you score, so we can uh, make it to the final and uh, <laughs> challenge the man. <laughs> I have heard from maybe six or seven people this morning that they're a little beat up, a little sore and really tired. And I told them, I said, but the good news is you're way better off right now than you're going to be tomorrow because every day is going to get harder. I've known Don for many years, and he's very unassuming, he's very gentle and kind, he's a complete gentleman, but he's a tough guy. When uh, an instructor says, everybody understand that, the answer would be, who ya? That would be yes. Everybody understand that? And I think in order to survive and hang with him, you are gonna have to have intestinal fortitude like you have never had, ever. What I try to do on a daily basis is do something physical. Ideally, I'm outside 10 to 18 hours a week. There's no such thing as an easy ride or an easy run around here, which keeps you from getting lazy. One of the best things about living here in the mountains is I can go four miles up the backcountry road and there's a ski resort up there and also the Appalachian Trail, the trail running, actually if you go one way, if you go south, you'll hit Georgia. If you go north on the AT, the Appalachian Trail, you go to Maine. Everything is extreme and beautiful and just perfect. Blue Ridge Parkway is my favorite place in the United States to ride a road bike. There just isn't any traffic and the scenery is amazing. I do not want to live anywhere else but here.
Hello and welcome. This is a mission briefing. Over 400 very qualified applicants signed up for this surviving man and you 32 have been accepted. Congratulations. You'll be getting mission briefings for the next month. This course is going to be very, very difficult. It's going to be challenging. It's meant to defeat most of you. We want to defeat most of you. One person's going to be standing at the end of this. Nathan yeah. is a fitness model. No surprise Ladies there. are going to love him. He's a father of four, a day trader, and a competitive shooter. I'm Nathan Ingro from Phoenix, Arizona. When I was about 21, 3 o'clock in the morning, and I got into a horrible car accident. I called Nate because he happened to live close by and he was to my side before the ambulance got there. 2019, while my dad and I were watching TV on the couch, he suffered a major heart attack. Nathan was just in the other room, so I called him for help. He came sprinting in and immediately started performing uh, chest compressions. I grew so much respect for him that day. His ability to just jump into action. I'm very physically fit, but I'm not a great runner, so if they make us do a long distance run, I might not be a number one on that one, that's for sure. But make me climb something, do a bunch of push-ups and sit-ups, I've got that in the bag for sure. He's been training very diligently. I think he's in it to win it, and I think he might be a sleeper. I shoot every single week in competition, so the competition that we're in doesn't rattle me. So we're here at Randy Couture's gym in Las Vegas, Nevada, the X Couture gym, and he is hosting an event here for his veterans at the X Couture GI Foundation. Um, so we, uh, myself and some other contestants from the Surviving Man Show from American Stories are here to celebrate with them. This is Liberty. Yeah. She's a firearms instructor, a writer, and a paralegal. Wow. And she's from Texas. My name is Liberty Austin. I'm born and raised in Texas. I'm a hunter, a firearms instructor. I'm a bit of a top boy. I wasn't raised in the firearms world. You know, in, in my family, that's something that the boys did. So I'm actually the first female in my family that actually started to do hunting and shooting sports and things like that. When I first heard about surviving man, I just thought this was the greatest opportunity ever to you know, be a part of something where I was gonna be put outside of my comfort zone and to kind of breach my own boundaries. And that's really why um, I wanted to do it so badly. So she knows yeah. about endurance and overcoming obstacles right. with little to nothing, yeah. And so she likes testing herself. Yes. So I think her mental attitude is the one that really could take her to the end. Yeah, I Good. agree. All of us here at U.S. Law Shield are super excited for Liberty and we wish her all the best on Surviving Man. Hope to see her at the finish. Randy Couture, the man, okay. Uh, so excited to be here. So grateful for you to have us here. I'm focused. I've been watching for the omens. In the world of sports, mixed martial arts has carved out a unique position. At one point, the sport was considered too dangerous in many states, but one man changed that, bringing strategy and tactics where those once only raw violence. That man is Randy Couture, revered by his fans, honored by his peers, feared by his enemies. His story captured the imagination of America. Some said he was too old to do it, but for a military veteran like Randy, no challenge was too difficult. story of an underdog that became six-time world champion, bringing fame to himself and to the sport he loved. This ain't no pretend superhero. Meet the real deal. The natural, Randy Couture. For our mixed martial arts training center, Extreme Couture MMA, about five years ago, we recognized that the transition, whether you're a professional athlete or a soldier, when you walk away from that piece of your identity, it's a very difficult thing to do. It's a, there's a lot of guys that struggle. So we kind of tried to create a safe place, number one, where they could train. Something about sweating, working out together, and most of them to a man will say, oh man, you should have seen me when I was in uniform. I was in great shape, now look at me. So making them feel a little better about themselves, but mostly working out next to somebody, whether you know them or not, once you sit down after that workout and talk, a little more connected, a little more likely to open up. So Allison, you're competing in Surviving Man. You're competing against me. So bring it, girl. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna have fun. 
Hey, I'm not above pulling your hair if I have to. I just want you to know, okay? <laughs> okay, okay, this is Allison. Yes. She looks like a supermodel. Yeah who can kick your butt. When I got into Instagram, a lot of people just thought it was like me in a bikini. I started getting a lot of remarks, right? And like, people would judge you. She just wants attention. You know, I always took that kind of personal. So when I got into shooting, my biggest thing was to kind of show that you can kind of do everything that you want to do. So you don't just have to look good or you don't just have to, you know, be into fitness. You can also get into shooting and protect yourself and protect your home. So for me, I wanted it to be known that like, hey, you know, I am tough. I'm not just this girl with makeup. You know, she's pro self-defense. So guys, she is not available. She does have a rather large ring. Yeah. Thing I noticed in the Zoom calls that she has a certain vulnerability. She's got an intensity, but she's also willing to be vulnerable. And I think that might be a strength. I think that if, if a person thinks that they've got it like that, yeah. they're doomed. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> Because true. you never got it like that, especially when Dawn is at the helm. What does it take to become a Navy SEAL? And it's come down to four things. I think it pertains to anybody who would ask me, what do I do to train for surviving man? Number one, every day do something to make you stronger. Maybe that's push-ups, maybe it's pull-ups, maybe it's CrossFit, maybe it's Orange Theory. Every day do something to make you faster. Speed work, fart legs. In two minutes, try doing 130 in two minutes. That's the second thing. The third thing, every day do something to make you smarter. Get better at map and compass. Learn weapon safety. Learn the safety rules. Know these rules. There's zero tolerance for a safety violation on the range. I will get you sent home right away. And the fourth point, especially for the SEALs, I tell them, every day do something good for somebody. Help a teammate, help somebody in trouble. Help your neighbor, help somebody struggling up on the ropes course. Help somebody who's struggling on the run. Every day do something to help somebody. You have to be prepared mentally and physically to be pushed very hard every day you're there. I feel like Don Man is just looking for the next survivor man, I, uh, just the next guy who just is gonna push himself all the way, guy or girl, you know. Tariq. Colorado, father of four, he's the president of the gun club. Mm -hmm. He's an entrepreneur. Since I was like 16, I, I actually met Kobe Bryant at 16 and he told me to dream big. So I'm, I'm every day, I'm dreaming big. For my job, don't fire me yet. I'll be back soon or later. Besides that, you have something, go for it. It doesn't matter what age you are, still go for it. There's people here way older than me and they're kicking my ass on running. So it's just showing me that I have to just run a little more and just be a little bit um, better with my physical training. Okay, I love this photo of Chris. Oh yeah. It's such a great shot. Yeah. Right? He's a professional shooter and adventure race competitor. Part cyborg, part bionic man. An extremely humble individual that would give you the shirt off of his back even if it was the last thing that he owned. I'm always seeking adventure in new ways and the opportunity to come do a show that's never been done before in a setting that's never been seen before with challenges, obstacles, and weapon systems that haven't been used at events like this is a great opportunity. To me, it's all about the adventure and trying to test myself to see what I'm capable of. It's all up here. I got you without much preparation. I've known Chris Way for about six years. Solid guy, athletic, knowledgeable. We've been hanging off sides of mountains, cliffs. He's someone that I trust in my life. If he develops an interest in something, he will not just learn how to do it, he will learn how to be the best at it. One thing that attracted me to Surviving Man was that it included a lot of skill sets that I'm familiar with, but I, w I haven't been able to test them against people who are also functioning at the highest level. I was a sniper in Special Forces, and I, he asked me all these questions about stuff. I got super annoyed, and I was like, Chris, you gotta take a class. In the end, Chris is 10 times better than I've ever been. So the opportunity to go up against a, a SEAL Team 6 veteran. Corners, corners, good, good, good. Trying to stay a meter off the wall. And see where your skills match compared to someone like that. It's a great opportunity. Primary sweep, and then secondary, more thorough, meticulous sweep. 
I actually met David in a class and I was instantly drawn to him because David just has this shine about him. And then I find out that he's this oil filled worker and he works long hours and he likes to build things and he does all this manly man stuff. Yet yeah, he's the most kind, generous person I've ever met. I'm David Beasy. I'm from uh, Clifton, Colorado. As far as my strengths, I'm a kind person. I like to help people out whenever I can. He comes into the shop all the time and he's always caring, outgoing, positive attitude. On the range, he's got great skills. As far as my weaknesses, try not to psych myself out, yeah. I overthink things. <laughs> Navigation's still a challenge, but you know, just learn as I go and I just came here mainly to have fun and have a good time. What is she doing in the hijabi? I think it's cover. Really? She's some kind of operative. No way. She didn't specify her profession. Wow. What she did say yeah. is that she's had five hostile deployments. Five deployments in hostile areas. Okay. Now, she didn't specify that she was military. Right. But she knew Don because... She okay, so this woman had an encounter with Don. Yeah. And... Now, if you're in having an encounter with Don and Don is not retired, just think Friendly. about that. Friendly, right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Lisa Prey, so I'm from Glen Birdie, Maryland. I met Lisa 30 years ago. Our idea of exercise was mental challenges, never physical. If a ball was involved, Lisa would run away screaming. Good at hacking computers, really nothing related to the competition, but uh, I like to shoot. I don't like to run. I like high obstacles. I just came here to have a good time. I didn't have enough time to prepare exactly. I'm just gonna fly under the radar maybe. Maybe nobody will notice. Now, our youngest competitor is Landon, definitely under 25. Yeah. He's a hand-to-hand -hand combat specialist. My name is Landon Church, and I'm from Wilkesboro, North Carolina. I've never been in a desert before, being on the, on the East Coast and in a lot of grassy areas. So this is a little new to me, but, you know, I like it. It's not as humid. Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, mm. and he's competed. He's done competitive MAA. And he's been, you know, shooting since he was knee high to a grasshopper. He has a lot of the qualities. Yeah. The big question mark is, will he hold up under pressure? Right, because he's young. Yeah, right. who knows? And he could. It could do better than anybody. He but could, he could. We'll I mean, see. he's tough, yeah. you know? I think my weaknesses will definitely be desert land navigation. I think it'll be a lot more difficult without you know, certain terrain features that I'm used to back home. Uh, my strengths are definitely uh, physical, being that I'm a lot younger than a lot of the competition and still in the collegiate athletics. I think that I'll excel at the physical aspects and a lot of the shooting aspects, just growing up and, and training is all I've ever really done. I lost all my the cards, it's all like, the But you got a magazine, he doesn't. <laughs> when I came out of the wound, there was there was pretty much a gun in my hand. Um, you know, shot ARs, shoot a lot of 9 mil handguns. Uh, round counts are obviously really low right now with the price of ammo, but still training my dry fire and, and still taking classes every now and then just to keep myself sharp and get better and hopefully, hopefully win this competition. We have a cast of characters that we ended up settling on, which is extremely interesting. Think about it. These are people who, for a hobby, do military-type athletic activities, and they do firearms training, and they do self-defense training, and this is what they do for fun. They're just driven. You know, they, they're strong mentally and physically. So I think, I think it's going to be very entertaining to watch. This course is going to be very challenging. I wish you a lot of luck this week training and preparing for the course. The stronger your mindset is, the better you're going to be. You don't have to be the fastest or the fittest or the best shot. If you have the stronger mindset, you're going to go further.
Front Sight is the nation's largest private firearms training facility. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna verify some basic gun handling skills with you. All right, we're gonna go out to the range and we're just gonna have you go through some extremely basic gun handling skills so we get a look at you know your rudimentary level of, of expertise. This is just us looking at you just to make sure you're safe. That's it. Don't read anything more into that at all. And what we're gonna do is have you go down to range seven. We have a bunch of tables set up and we'll have handgun, magazine, ammo, a rifle, AR, etc. Put on the holster, you know, chamber check, magazine check, verify the thing is unloaded, put it in the holster, and then we will run you through a little bit of dry practice. We'll actually do a little bit of shooting. We'll move over to the AR, we're gonna do the same thing. That's it, you're probably gonna shoot 20 rounds, max, just to make sure that we like what we see. If there are any problems, that's totally fine. We're gonna jump in and help or critique or correct or coach, whatever we need to do, but I wanna make certain that there are no safety issues from this point forward. Let me go over the range commands, which are very straightforward. I'll simply get everybody up on the line. We'll make sure that nobody's downrange and essentially that the range is safe. And we will say the range is clear, meaning there's nobody downrange. That'll be followed up with either dry practice drill, which basically means unload, or firing drill, which basically means load. Right? And then we will run you through just from the ready, have you point in, just do a little bit of dry practice of gun handling, then we'll load you up, you'll shoot a few controlled pairs, unload, move over, really simple. Turn around, please. Okay, so there you go, face us. Okay, any questions, any concerns about the basic safety issues, please turn and face. All right, any questions at all, any concerns? I mean, safety looked good. Frankly, this went way better than I expected. We, we didn't have anything to say, so nicely done. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Great to see you all here. You guys and ladies have been chosen among over 500 people to be here. And I'm just honored to be around you all. What I'm about to brief you on is something new. All that stuff you heard about, Surviving Man, reality TV show and all that, it's part of a cover story. 